Prime Minister Joseph John Dutte gets the COVID-19 jab in an ongoing immunization campaign for members of government and of the diplomatic corps to encourage all citizens to voluntarily get immunized. The World Day of Creativity and Innovation is celebrated to raise awareness to the role of ingenuity in attaining the sustainable development goals and addressing current day challenges. Koton Sport of Garua will play the quarterfinal of the CAF Confederations Cup in spite of their one to two goal defeat against Jeunesse Sportif of Kabili, Algeria in a day five fixture in Garua today. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Those were the headlines of the 730 News. I urge you once again to put on your face masks, to wash your hands regularly, and to consult a physician or any other health personnel if you notice any symptoms. This is the only way to save lives and to curb the spread of the virus. Welcome back. Social and economic activities along the Ngili Bridge between Chad and Cameroon have resumed after a closure due to the tensions in the neighboring country. The inhabitants of Kuseri in Logon and Shari Division, which is at proximity with the Chadian capital, Jamida, are being reassured by authorities of their security. Ayok John Ashu has details of what obtained while circulation was suspended. The usually busy Ngeli Bridge, which separates Kuseri, chief town of Logon and Shari Division, from the Chadian capital, Jamena, is now a picture of itself. Vehicles transporting foodstuff and essential products bound from Jamena cannot go beyond the Cameroonian territory due to the dusk to dawn curfew in Chad. All our goods pass through Kuseri, and with the closure of the border, business is dormant. As inhabitants of a neighboring town, we equally feel touched by the situation in Chad. Hence, the Kuseri market, a peace center of commercial activities between the two countries, is in a standstill as residents continue to visit the Chadian community in Kuseri for condolences. But the border locality of Kuseri is neither under threats of insecurity nor witnessing any influx of people from Jamena. I don't see any refugee that is uh, crossing the boundary from Jamena to Kuseri here. Meanwhile, local administrative authorities reassure the population that there is no cause for panic. A security measure has been taken so that our population can go on, but there's no way to be afraid. Due to its proximity to Jamena, Logon and Shari Division is home to over 4,000 Chadians with fraternal ties, hence the impact of the demise of the Chadian president is felt within the division. The population can now heave a sigh of relief as the bridge is once more opened again. A voluntary vaccination campaign for COVID-19 organized for members of government and those of the diplomatic corps is underway at the auditorium of the Prime Minister's office. Leading by example, the head of government, Joseph John Guti, was inoculated today alongside several of his collaborators to encourage Cameroonians to be receptive towards the COVID-19 immunization drive. Christian Chair Atam reports from the Star Building. The voluntary vaccination session organized for members of government started with an opening message from Prime Minister Joseph John Gute. The head of government said the session authorized by the President of the Republic is meant to encourage the population adhere to the vaccination option taken by the state. The vaccination proper started with Prime Minister Joseph John Gute being the first to volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> Several other members of government took part in the vaccination exercise. All three COVID-19 vaccines currently being used in Cameroon were available and participants had the latitude to request for Sinopharm, Sputnik V or AstraZeneca. Members of the diplomatic corps also took part in the vaccination campaign. 
there was an atmosphere of excitement and confidence all through the session as members of government and members of the diplomatic corps participated wholeheartedly. They sounded convinced that vaccination against COVID-19 is the right option for them to help break the chain of contamination. The vaccination campaign against COVID-19 for members of government was also attended by the presidents of the Order of Medical Doctors and the Council of Pharmacists, who joined the Permanent Secretary of the Enlarged Vaccination Program and other experts in reassuring the members of government about the safety and advantages of vaccination against COVID-19. And as you just watched, Prime Minister Joseph Jengute was the first to be vaccinated today in the voluntary exercise that targets top personalities. The move to boost their immunity against the virus also translates government's conviction on the safety of COVID-19 vaccines administered throughout the nation. Here's an excerpt of the Prime Minister after his short. All uh, witnessing loved ones falling left and right. People are dying. And uh, so far, uh, vaccination is the only way, and not only to avoid getting COVID, but even if you had it, it would be very mild. It wouldn't uh, require any hospitalization. So I think uh, it's a good thing to take it. I've just taken my shot. Uh, as you can see, I'm quite well. And I encourage uh, all Cameroonians who can to take uh, the vaccine. That's the only way we can handle this uh, COVID-19 as it is done in all other parts of the world. On to one of our top stories, today is World Creativity and Innovation Day to raise awareness around the importance of creativity and innovation in problem solving. With the global health pandemic, intuitive minds have come up with inventions on face visors, hydro-alcoholic gels and other protective kits. Cynthia Tapsala went down to the town of Yaoundé to discover the works of some brave persons. Here's a report. A walk-through sanitization gate equipped to take temperatures and provide hand hydroalcoholic gel, a Cameroon invention, one of many in the battle against the coronavirus. We make many tools. We send our product to, for more than 100 companies in Cameroon now. And um, we are now trying to expand around Africa. With the advent of the global pandemic, several talented individuals nationwide came up with varied local made protective equipments, such as this pedal operated hand washing basin, reusable face mask, and face visors, just to name a few. We need hand sanitizer, we need local mask. And all this is what we call the kit anti-COVID. For the week, we can sell 10,000. Who are the buyers? Who have for the government? Many saw the health challenge as an economic opportunity, one which required a change in some school syllables, where workshops were now more centered on COVID-19 creations. To, to better fight against the COVID, we intend to create tests to know if somebody have the COVID or not. As the world commemorates creation, Creativity and innovation this April 21st, there couldn't be a better time to encourage new ideas to make the world a better place after two years of a pandemic. The Higher Technical Teachers Training College in Ebolova in the South region is one of the institutions renowned for the production of innovative machines. Final year students have been able to invent robots, drones and other equipment for local use. Bernie Tabong now presents some of these ingenious projects in this report. At the workshop of the Higher Technical Teachers Training College, HTTTC Abolova, projects realized by students have been jealously kept. Annually, final year students of the institution produce robots, drones, grinding machines and other equipment. At HTTTC Abolova, the lessons we are taught are get towards meeting the needs of the population. We have produced a drone with with four cameras. The students of the school are trained in several domains. These include carpentry, tailoring, mechanics, and computer sciences, amongst others. Their end of year projects, however, do not end in their institution. We have already received the visit of the Minister of Petites and Moines Entreprises. 
We were visited by the Minister of Small and Medium Sized Enterprises, and plans are on the way to create startups for students who realize projects. The HTTTC will over as a school where students are being encouraged to produce innovative objects in view of overcoming today's challenges. A profusion of initiatives to motivate innovation among the youth is spread out in a number of ministries, from higher education to youth affairs, post and telecommunications, as well as small and medium-sized enterprises, training and financing chances are obtainable. Iwane Polis says an example is the Protophone Awards project. Stimulating economic and job growth via the application of entrepreneurship, creativity and innovation has been the focus of Cameron's government. Through the Ministry of Higher Education, a presidential program to support the employment of young diplomas and the creation of enterprises has so far transformed many youngsters. If you want to develop Cameroon, you have to transform our, the structure of our economy. Social entrepreneurship, to go to uh, economic entrepreneurship. Another major move by government in encouraging youth creativity and innovation has been the 2020 Protofon Awards, a project piloted by the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Civic Education and the Ministry of Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises, Social Economy and Handicraft. Through the Protofon Awards, 20 youngsters have been given technical and financial support to the tune of 2.5 million CV francs. Cabos Park is a biodegradable, eco-friendly packaging made from the recycling of cocoa pots. Cocoa pot breaking machine is actually a machine that breaks cocoa and sifts automatically. The three-year special youth plan prescribed on February 10, 2016 by the head of state has a budget of 102 billion CV francs. The initiative is presently being implemented beyond the original three-year period and aims to financially support 1.5 million young people in Cameroon. In other news, the Yaoundé Municipal Lake is currently being surrounded by a security fence, an indication that the company tasked with the construction of a five-star hotel on the site has begun work. The project is a Kuto, is a lecto company, which started preliminary works on the 4th of July, 2020. Joyce Kimbi Fuwaju assesses the progress made in this investigation. Tuesday, April 20, 2021, the Yaoundé Municipal Lakeside. Very little work going on compared to the usual ambience expected on a project of its magnitude. We approached the few workers we found on the site who directed us to their worksite base. At the worksite base, we were equally forwarded over to the project owner, the Ministry of Urban Development and Housing. Here, the minister designated the project engineer to illuminate the ongoings of the project. Since uh, July uh, 2020, the minister has already signed the service order, which asks to the, the enterprise like now, to start the job. But the matter was that we didn't pay the what we call avant de démarrage. Since uh, 4 January, the money is already paid so that the project was already started. In less than two weeks, information say the ambience on the work side will see rumblings of engines and trucks, as well as crisscrossing of engineers on the side. Beginning of May, we end the, the, the lake with all the water and, and the mold. And work will start. And work will start. In less than two years, the municipal lake site in Yaoundé will metamorphose after swallowing a colossal sum of 14 billion CFA francs as project cost. Actors involved in the administration of justice in the littoral region have been guarded against rights abuses. The Attorney General of the Administrative Court in Douala urged the legal practitioners to shun on ethical practices during a meeting attended by security officials. Alphonse Abongwa has the details. Accusations are rife on the judiciary in Douala over abuses on justice seekers. For instance, the exchange of justice for money, undue delay of case files of the accused, breach of procedures in the administration of justice, undue arrests and detentions. 
disregard for presumption of innocence, among other ethical preoccupations. The Attorney General of the Court of Appeal in Douala, Chief Justice Jean-Claude Robert Foué, unites actors involved in the chain under his area of command to think together and come out of this critical situation. And as he said, cooperation has no confidence on us. So we have to show them that they have to have confidence by the way we work, by the way we conduct um, inquiries. It is the first meeting organized between the Attorney General, who himself is new in this office, and other appointed officials, including the police, gendarmerie, and the judiciary, with whom he will work to correct lawbreakers. Sad news, members of the National Assembly are still in shock over the death of Deputy Speaker Honorable Emilia Monjuwalifaka, the fallen chairperson of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, whom they joined to celebrate her 62nd birthday last Saturday in Boya, is remembered for her devotedness, hard work and sociable nature. Details in this report. An inexpressible void creeps into the soul at the glimpse of these residents whose main occupant is absent forever. Honorable Emilia Monjo Alifaka is in the past and her peculiar elegance and sharp-witted nature are missed by her colleagues who've lost a special being. It is a very, very, very big loss for the National Assembly. She had been an astute politician, a mother, an advisor to all of us. A very strong lady, always very well dressed, very joyful concerning everybody. The honorary president of female parliamentarians, born in 1959, inspired her peers with every move. She's a strong woman. One we can say the example of the woman who will be in the politic. She was my mother. She is a very good woman, a very good leader for us. Strong woman. It was a humble woman, a working woman. The lakeside office she occupied to legislate is now sealed, just like her contributions to solve the Anglophone crisis. It was an open person with whom I discussed about the Anglophone crisis at the end of the session. We had uh, two hours. The Commonwealth Parliamentary Association has not only lost its chairperson, the Sun Movement has been deprived of its 2020 nutrition ambassador tasked to eradicate all forms of malnutrition. And in the southwest region, from where Honorable Emilia Monjoa Lifaka hails, the inhabitants are yet to recover from the trauma. Her demise comes only days after they communed with her, thanking God for her life. Olivia Mboyambai has the details. <laughs> Disbelief, dismay and shock are not enough to describe the emotional state of the people of the southwest region in general and Boya in particular, following the sudden death of Honorable Emilia Munjoa Lifaka. Personalities and family members have been trooping into her campsick residence in Boya in total disbelief, given that her death comes only three days after her sister's second birthday celebration. The memories of a lady of dignity, of integrity, of a lot of composure and sense of responsibility to her family and her people of Fako and her constituency. This is a loss which we cannot recover from. Medical sources say Honorable Emilia Monjoa Alifaka was rushed to the Boya Regional Hospital at midday on Tuesday following a malaise. She later died at about 8 p.m. same day. Honorable Emilia Monjo Alifaka has been described by many in the region as a political bauba who inspired many, especially women, to join the political arena. A woman who made quite an impact on the grassroots population in her constituency and beyond. And may her soul rest in peace. Now on to diplomacy. The Turkish government has pledged to work with Cameroon in the domain of decent employment and fairness at work. The Turkish ambassador to Cameroon, His Excellency Volkan Isikshi, took the commitment during an audience granted him by the Minister of Labor and Social Security, Grégoire Owona, the exchange on employment and study programs. Here's an excerpt of the Turkish diplomat. 
on a passé en revue. On We reviewed the actual state of affairs in regards to employment. We look at the possibility of a future cooperation to be able to create jobs for Cameroonians. The minister and I also talk about exchange study programs between our two countries. Those cocoa farmers in the South region produce close to 2,500 tons of cocoa beans during the 2017-2018 season. To encourage them, the Minister of Trade, Luke Magloire Mbarga Atangana, has been distributing premiums to increase their yields. Clarice Arita Kangustea now reports. 14 associations with a total of 756 cocoa farmers from the six divisions of the Southwest region were the happy recipients of the cocoa quality premiums, more than 170 million safe francs for their output in the 2017-2018 cocoa season. Second, after the Central Region for Outstanding Performance, which marketed some 2,429 tons of quality Cameroonian cocoa abroad. The Southwest region has been in the past about 45% of of natural production, but uh, because of the circumstances we know, they have lost that uh, first place. It's time to take again that place because uh, the potential remains. In the presence of the president of the Southwest Regional Council, Bakuma and Langozakios, the initiative was saluted. Farmers with this, some, such payments, they can group themselves and even buy things like tarpaulins or construct small, small uh, drying facilities. They're receiving money from the labor youth. You've made. It's an encouragement to do better. The money will help me to buy some of my chemicals, build my whole own. Emphasis was equally laid on the creation of platforms which will make way for more collaboration with local and foreign chocolate makers. Despite our efforts, COVID-19 plunged many families into mourning and seriously hampered the functioning of our economy and society. COVID-19 news with nearly 600,000 doses of Sinopharm and AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccines available in the country. Many Cameroonians wonder if the beneficiaries will still only be health workers. Will persons with underlying health conditions get the doses or can anyone just go for a shot? Born in summer and Dr. Joseph Fulcom are at the Public Health Emergency Operation Center. They now clarify. Hello, Baldwin. Good evening to you, Esther Kima. Actually, after the Sinopharm vaccines, where emphasis was laid on health professionals in Cameroon, we have had the arrival of, uh, the, uh, of uh, AstraZeneca vaccines in Cameroon. Let us find out from our guest, uh, Dr. Joseph Fokam, who are those directly concerned with uh, uh, the AstraZeneca vaccines? Is it everybody or there is a particular group of uh, Cameroonians? Good evening to you, Dr. Who are those concerned with uh, the AstraZeneca vaccines that arrived in the country last weekend? Thank you, Baldin. Uh, in Cameroon, we actually have two different vaccines in the field, and priority was given to health professionals and then the elderly who also have comorbidity. But actually, everybody is eligible for this vaccine. And one important factor to note is that this va these two vaccines have the minimum efficacy required by, by WHO for use in this emergency situation. So what we really want everyone to know what is most important, the best vaccine you get is the first one you lay your hands on. And why? Because the earlier you get vaccinated, the earlier we prevent the virus from spreading and the better we manage the epidemic control. So in such a context, we don't care if you are a health staff, we don't care if you are a community member, please go out there for the vaccine. More and more it will be available for everybody in Cameroon. Thank you so much, Dr. Joseph Fokam. More and more, the vaccines will be available for anybody. Yourself, Esther Kima, you can get administered any of the vaccines. The vaccines are there for everybody. Back to you, Esther Kima. 
Thanks very much, Bolin Sama. That is something we will be considering in the coming days. And from health to technological development, the leading Chinese ICT company, Huawei, will henceforth be involved in the transfer of knowledge in the African Institute of Computer Sciences and IFTIXUP of Douala. An agreement to that effect was signed today by the Director General of Huawei, Cameroon, Duyin, and the Institute's resident representative, Armand Claude Abanda. Victor Siga was there. Now tell us more. The partnership agreement between the managing director of Huawei Cameroon and the resident representative of the African Institute of Computer Sciences seeks to reinforce the capacities of teachers of the institutions by the Huawei Information and Communication Technology Academy. It's uh, a very, a very good opportunity for, for our school, for our teachers and our students. The Huawei is uh, very big institute for technology, really worthy of uh, admiration. In this light, the leading Chinese ICT company will transfer their know-how for the advancement of ICT in Cameroon. With this kind of online trading, we believe that thousands of young students and young talents will have access to the latest technologies in the world. These will help promote self-employment in Cameroon through quality training in IFTIC SUP and EIE Cameroon. Good news in sports. Coton Sport of Garoua will play the quarterfinal of the CAF Confederations Cup. They picked up their qualification ticket today in spite of their 1 to 2 loss against Junior Sportive of Kabylie, Algeria. This is thanks to the 1 0 victory by Napsa Stars of Zambia over Renaissance Sportive of Berkan. Baldwin Summer has details. A less convincing Coton Sport of Garwa conceding a second group B defeat, a 1-2 to two defeat, considered against the same opponents, Jeunesse Sportif of Kabili, that tamed Coton Sport of Garwa at home. Six minutes into the match, Lambe Avena's incursion for Coton Sport of Garwa saw no one to concretize it. Both teams went on research on a nil-nil tile. Upon resumption for the second half, both teams came in determined to carry the day as Jeunesse Sportif of Kabylie at the 62nd minute, thanks to Ben Saeed, benefited from a lack of concentration in Coton Sport of Gawa's defense to open scores. The goal scored reignited the winning spirit in the Algerian team that increased tally a few minutes later through Mohamed Ben Sharifa. Two goals down, the Cotton Knights multiplied scoring opportunities and benefited from a penalty at the 87th minute, concretized by Tombi Aleni. After 90 minutes of play, Jeunesse Sportif of Kabylie carried the day with a 2-1 win, taking their points tally to nine, same like Coton Sport of Garwa. Despite their 2-1 defeat, Coton Sport of Garwa qualifies for the quarterfinals of the CAF Confederations Cup from Group B alongside Jeunesse Sportif of Kabylie after Napsa Stars defeated Renaissance Sportif of Bekan 1-0 for this edition of the 730 News in which you mainly heard that Prime Minister Joseph Jan Gute has gotten the COVID-19 jab in an ongoing immunization campaign for members of government and the diplomatic corps and this is to encourage all citizens to voluntarily get immunized against the coronavirus. More news comes up at 8.30 p.m. with Adel Mbala. I'll be back tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. God willing and go get your COVID-19 vaccine if you can in order to stall the spread of the ravaging virus. Good night and thanks for watching. I urge you once again to put on your face masks, to wash your hands regularly and to consult a physician or any other health personnel if you notice any symptoms. This is the only way to save lives and to curb the spread of the virus.
RTV News, ici, toute l'info.